This video is a continuation of the last video, discussing the change in the indie game scene since the release of Indie Game the Movie. Today, I want to discuss something that I've begun to notice about certain Steam games, and honestly, I hope it does not become more of a normalized thing when it comes to games that are created to take advantage of the algorithm and available metrics. For those who are out of the loop, what do I mean by this? Well, you can go on sites like Steam Spy and GameStats and review what types of games are doing well on Steam. You can see their median income, total games released with a particular tag, and so on. Because these statistics are readily available, I noticed we started to see a number of games in the indie scene that are all following a same sort of trend, which is algorithmic optimization. Now, this isn't too abnormal. Most games will copy other games that are big hits, even those that are indie. We've seen it in the Flash game era, with the rise of the tower defense style games after the popularity of Bloons, and Endless Runners gaining traction after Cannibalt. Despite other games using these hits as inspirations, the influenced projects usually tried their best to bring their own themes and styles to their games, that way they could differentiate themselves and not just be mere copycats. With the rise of Steam and access to these metrics from sites like Steam Spy, GameStats, and Steam Trender, we are no longer just seeing game developers jump on the trend of popular genres, but we're also watching them duplicate themes as well, along with aesthetics. Now, that's not unusual for the AAA space, as we all watch companies try to replicate the popularity of mascot platformers in the 90s, and the popularity of Call of Duty clones during the mid-2000s, to even the hero shooter boom that we saw in the mid-10s. Though originally as indies, we were supposed to reject that side of the industry and remove the corporate mindset, along with the focus groups, making games by committee, and instead leading with fun and artistry first. It's just a little disheartening to see. Just go on Steam and see how many games have dwarf in the name or in the theming just because the algorithm says it performs well, or how many roguelike deck builders we've seen since the release of Elautro. Now, it's definitely not me saying all indie games are being made this way, or even the majority. It's just something I've seen growing for the last couple of years. After the popularity boom of the Souls-like genre, you begin to see a number of games try to replicate the game in various ways, from the dark aesthetic, atmospheric and environmental storytelling, all the way down to just throwing the name Souls into their game, even if the game wasn't a Souls-like. There's nothing wrong with wearing your inspiration on your sleeves. I'm definitely doing that with hand cannon, but I did things to distance myself from Capcom's Blue Bomber. A totally different story, the weapons don't work the same way outside of the charge cannon, and even then that's not 100%. Recoil mechanics, making it a flip screen instead of a traditional side scroller, the black and white aesthetic, and even the Metroidvania New Game Plus were all at least in part added to not be just another Mega Man clone. Think about all the games that are direct clones of Vampire Survivor, or the number of games that have needlessly added farming mechanics after the popularity of Stardew Valley the pixelated voxel aesthetic of Minecraft, or all the games that use the same color palettes to achieve that quote-unquote cozy aesthetic. There's nothing wrong with being inspired, but it's another thing to be a direct copy. Even when AAA games follow trends, they usually try to add their own twist to the games. Mortal Kombat and Street Fighter are both fighters, but play completely different. The classic God of War games, Devil May Cry, and Ninja Gaiden are all hack and slashes, but don't even really feel like the same genres, since they all focus on different mechanics in different ways. I believe this rise of replicating in the indie scene is a multi-factor situation. First, it's easy to use tools, as those have lowered the bar to entry. The lower bar means people can now put in less effort to make something, and less time learning. If tools were still complicated or expensive, people would likely only invest their time if they believe their idea was truly unique, innovative, and likely to succeed. Since you may only need to spend a few weeks or months of time to make a simple clone, and since a lot of tools are now free, and no-code solutions no longer force aspiring solo devs to spend years of mastering their craft before creating anything that's passable. Oh, and I almost forgot, throw in the opportunity to make money, and well, you have Attack of the Clones. Though the chance of making any real money from a clone of a very recent hit is rare. There's no solution to this problem. This is all really just an observation, and I'm sure some of you can see it as well. I think the best thing that can happen is to allow these clone games that don't add anything to sink to the bottom, so that way they're seen as a waste of time by developers, and then those developers can either learn to either iterate and innovate over those ideas, or create entirely new ones. Creativity, at least good creativity, is a learned skill. The skill grows as you create more and more, and learn how to properly implement your ideas. In spite of my concerns, I still have a lot of hope for the indie scene. I keep seeing new and innovative games, breakout hits, and hidden gems. We've even resurrected genres and aesthetics 
that were once banished from the AAA space, and now those same major publishers that once refused to make those games are now trying to replicate the resurrected indie styles. Anyways, that's it for today everyone, thanks for watching, and thanks for your time.